Okay guys, so yesterday I did take out the Vibe Shearwaters 125. We spent 11 and a half hours in the boat in the ocean. So I'm going to give you a fair and honest review since I've been an Outback guy for the last couple of years and I absolutely love the Outback. So we wanted to give the Shearwaters a try. So here's my opinion guys. First trip on the salt with the Shearwaters 125. <laughs> Good fishing day today. Oh, I really care what these guys are sharp. <laughs> Copper rock fish. First link caught out of the shear water, 125 guys. A little short. Supposed to be 22. <laughs> was really super good on the water really stable um, the one thing some of the some of the things that I for me for what I do out here in the Pacific Ocean fishing guys is the tracks are you see where the seed is the tracks don't come back far enough and I don't really want to drill a hole in the boat and put some flush mounts or whatever but I, I guess that's you could do that if you wanted to but I mean you have to basically get out of the seat if we're trolling, you know, trolling or something like that. But that, that's that's one of the drawbacks for me. This as uh, the other thing I had an issue with is this screw didn't have enough Loctite on it. So basically it was coming undone when I was out there. So I had to keep an eye on it because every time I put the tensioning brake on there, it, it, it actually got bottomed out where it wouldn't even work. So... It was easy fix. I put some Loctite. I put a, a Loctite of the crap out of it. So, and then now the brake is working. And then I tightened it down as tight as I could. So, and readjusted the cables because I the lines because I figured they would got a little bit of stretch yesterday. But um, yeah, for the boat was super super stable. You, you guys seen it? I stood up in the ocean in it yesterday. Um, I wouldn't. It, it, I gotta say versus a. The only other drawback to me is the steering. And somebody made a comment 
that you can fine-tune the thing. Well, you can only pull these lines back so far before this thing bottoms out, so. Um, but uh, it doesn't turn. One, one thing I'm going to do, a modification I'm going to do, is I'm going to pull this off, and I'm going to build a, a longer and wider blade. So when it's in the water and it's down here below the keel, that um, it it does maybe it'll turn better. I don't know. That's 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 my kind of theory on, on that fix. And uh, but everything else, I was pretty happy with uh, stability and and uh, it's pretty it's pretty fast. I got to say. We're going to put it side by side test uh, next to the Hobie Outback. And uh, Pepper will be riding the Outback and we'll switch and we'll see what our thoughts are. But yesterday in rough water, I mean, I don't think this gets any more water over the bow than the Outback. It does sit lower in the water versus the Outback. But um, I fish big water in the Pacific out here. I know a lot of guys don't. But other than that, I think it's going to be a great boat, especially if somebody wants to get into a pedal kayak for under two thousand bucks. Um, the drive is amazing. Oh, here's a, here's another drawback for me, guys. This is a, this is one thing. Let's see if I can. Well, this is the this is the drawback for me. If you have to get in and turn around like I did in the ocean. It's really easy to unlock, to kick your drive. I wish you guys would have made these out of metal. And uh, I may just assemble one of these and see if they can be made into metal. But that, to me, it's easy to lock back in, and then this here's loose. So, you know, it didn't have an issue yesterday, but you know, what's the cost to make these things out of aluminum versus plastic? You know, and uh, other than that, I love the pod. You can see my finer verde hangs out the bottom there, so uh, I have to readjust it. I must have hit it on loading it up yesterday, but I love the, I wish Hobie would do this, is make it where you can pull your pod out. So, everything's sealed in one unit. I use the I use these Scotty mounts. I forgot the name of these mounts here, but this is what I used uh, for my camera mount and my rod holders. But other than that, I always use these. I don't know if anybody uses these, but I love these things. Quick draws. Cabela's makes them, but it's a great boat for for the price. Um, one other thing too, I would have molded, I would have molded these into the kayak. That would just eliminate this leak point if you guys molded these in. And, uh, um, but the seat is amazing and comfortable. Hobie needs to step it up on their seat. I, I mean, I love Hobie, but I mean, look at these seats. These seats are very well made. They're super comfortable. I spent 11 and a half hours, more than 11 and a half hours in that thing, but 11 and a half hours in the water. And uh, you can get up here in the, on the stand-up platform and you can still function with your drive. I, I'm sure a guy, if you wanted to, you could make this handle, make a handle like this longer so that you could be in that stand-up position or on the high position at 16 inches. So... And the other thing I found is when it's in a slow position, you can't get this. It's hard to get the drawer out if you're sitting in it. So you have to get out to operate the drawer. I like that position there for when I'm kicking on the ocean. It's just comfortable, more laid back. It's easier. Like I said, I haven't been out. I haven't been out because of this stupid uh, pandemic thing. So... Um, but I did spend 11 and a half hours pedaled all day long yesterday. So I, I know I'd, I have to look at my miles, but I know I'm over six or seven miles, if not farther. So 
All right, guys. I hope you like this review. So um, we'll do more here shortly. We're going to go up. We're going to work from here to Oregon, California to Oregon to Washington and to Idaho back into Nevada here in, in the first part of July. So stay tuned on videos. Shearwater versus Hobie Outback.